No matter how good your smartphone camera is, shaky video still sucks, and there's only so much digital and optical image stabilization can do. And that's where the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 comes in. DJI made their new smartphone gimbal better and cheaper than their previous smartphone gimbal. Although the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 does perform very well, the new price reduction does mean a few sacrifices. The DJI Osmo Mobile 2 currently retails for $129 versus the original DJI Osmo Mobile which used to retail for $200. Regarding what's in the box, it's very straightforward. The Osmo 2 comes in a hard styrofoam carrying case very similar to the one the DJI Spark comes in. You get the gimbal, a micro USB cable for charging, and your manuals. That's it. There's no wall charger, no wrist straps, or no extra accessories. If you want to pick the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 up, I'll have a link in the description below, and if you use the link, it really helps out the channel. Okay, let's do a quick rundown of the controls and ports on this guy. There's a micro USB port for charging, which obviously I wish was a USB-C instead. There's your USB port on the back so you can charge your own phone if you're running low on battery after a long day of filming. There's a universal mount on the bottom of the handle so you can attach the gimbal to a tripod or any other accessory you might have. On the left side, there's a toggle so you can zoom in and zoom out. There's a shutter button and then there's a joystick so you can tilt and pan the camera. Now you can go into the settings menu and adjust how fast you want the joystick to adjust the camera. You have three options to choose from, there's fast, medium, and slow. After filming with the Osmo 2, I found medium works best. Fast is just way too twitchy and slow just takes forever. The mode button does a few things. If you press and hold for a second and a half, it'll power the gimbal on or off. If you press once, it'll toggle between follow and lock mode. The little LED will also change colors. When it's green, it means the gimbal is in follow mode, and when it's yellow, it means the gimbal is in lock mode. If you double press the mode button, then the gimbal will reset the camera to the horizon, and if you triple press the mode button, it will switch between the back facing camera and the front facing camera. Just keep in mind that once you start recording, you can't swap from one camera to the other. Hopefully this feature will come in a future software update. Now here are the improvements DJI is claiming on their new Osmo Mobile 2 over their previous gimbal. You get a much better battery life of 15 hours versus the previous gimbals for and a half hours. The Osmo Mobile 2 weighs less, you can now mount your phone vertically and overheating motors shouldn't be a problem anymore. With a naked iPhone 8 Plus installed, I found the total system weighed in at one pound and a half or 686 grams and I could go about 15 minutes of shooting before needing to put the gimbal down for rest. Also while I was out getting footage, panoramas and multiple 10 minute time lapses, not once did the Osmo Mobile 2 overheat. However, I did manage to overheat the system by aggressively moving the gimbal around for about 10 minutes straight. At which point the gimbal would refuse to stabilize itself and the front motor got extremely hot. For regular use cases, I don't think the Osmo 2 will really have an issue overheating. I think the only way the Osmo 2 will overheat is if you're on a mission to overheat your Osmo 2. Flagship smartphones these days have the best cameras and optical and civilization we have ever seen in a smartphone and it's only getting better. But there's still a major benefit for using a gimbal to smooth out your video even more. First off, your framing stays much more consistent and you don't get those constant shocks every time you take a step when you're walking. Sure, gimbal systems aren't going to completely eliminate everything because there is still some slight undulation with the Osmo 2, but it's a lot better than having shaky video overall. Now you could go in and stabilize your footage in post with Final Cut Pro, but things still like to warp around a bit. It's not going to look as good if you actually had a gimbal. The Osmo 2 also has a tracking feature that works pretty well. Just like how you do on their drones, all you have to do is highlight whatever you want to track and the gimbal will try to keep that object in center the best it can while you freely move about. This feature is pretty cool, but it does have its limitations. You can't move too fast or your subject might get out of frame, but the Osmo will automatically lock back on once it finds it again. This feature is pretty useful if you have to keep moving, but you want to keep a specific car or person or any other subject in frame. But the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 isn't just good for videos, it can also capture some really cool moving time lapses, which I really like, and you can also capture some pretty stunning panoramas. And these are from panorama modes take a few seconds each. 180 degree panoramas take about 11 seconds to complete, 330 degree panoramas take about 16 seconds to complete, and 3x3 panoramas take about 19 seconds to complete. And personally, the 3x3 panoramas are my favorite and I think they are much more useful than the other two. They allow you to take in a scene much better without having to get super far away from your subject. 
The time lapses and motion time lapses are good for capturing B-roll and DJI lets you play around with the duration and intervals so the looks of these time lapses can vary. But the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 isn't without its problems. First, let's talk about software, which eventually can be fixed. At first, I was surprised the Osmo 2 used the older DJI Go app instead of the newer DJI Go 4 app. The camera app has a bit of a problem automatically and accurately setting itself to capture the best quality pictures and videos. Sometimes, images will be over or underexposed. Obviously, you don't have to use the DJI Go app, but to get the most out of the stabilizer, you should. I also hate that for for some reason, the app will automatically set itself to shoot in 720p 30 frames per second without you knowing. So you might accidentally end up capturing multiple 720p time lapses and not realizing after the fact, like me. Also, 180 and 330 degree panoramas don't really work in vertical mode. There's a lot of warping going on, but for some reason, the 3x3 panoramas work just fine. But the biggest problem with the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 is hardware. I absolutely hate the new spring-loaded clamp on this gimbal. It's easy to slip your phone in, but it's a nightmare to get your phone out. Also, the clamp rotates in the wrong direction. So if you want to switch from horizontal to vertical mode, you can't just rotate your phone. You have to actually take it out, rotate the clamp, and then put it back in. Also, the handle on the Osmo 2 is very slippery. It's ergonomic, but there are no grooves or hatching on the handle to get a solid grip. Obviously, this is a cost-saving measure, but I find it odd there's not even a wrist strap, because when you drop this, and you will, you're not just dropping your $130 gimbal, you're also probably dropping your $1,000 phone. Performance-wise, the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 is a great smartphone gimbal. It stabilizes your video, it doesn't overheat, the 15-hour battery life is solid, and the Osmo 2 lets you capture some stunning motion time lapses and 3x3 panoramas that just wouldn't be possible without a gimbal. Obviously, DJI needed to find a way to reduce the cost of their gimbal system from $200 to $130, but DJI needs to work on their software, they need to redesign the clamp to rotate in the opposite direction, and if you do pick one of these up, I highly advise you get a wrist strap or figure out how to jerry rig one on. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It helps out more than you realize. For more product reviews and deal alerts, check out jimcaddy.net. If you want to support the channel, pick up a shirt and I'll catch you next time.